Hi, and welcome back to Wandering Wild. It's bird day, where I'm going to teach you all about some of the common birds we may see on our hiking trip next week. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Okay, so for our video today, I've chosen seven birds, which more than likely we're going to see on our hiking trip next week, and then one bird that I really hope we see on our hiking trip next week. So I have no idea if we'll see that, but I hope we do. So let's get started. Now, also keep in mind that a lot of these birds are very common in this area. So if you live here in Northeast Georgia, Southeast United States, really, you could see a lot of these birds at your feeder in your backyard or just in your backyard foraging around. Now, if you hear Rosie in the background, just ignore it. I tried filming with her in here. She did almost knock over my tripod. So she can hear me talking and she's not real happy about it. But Moving on. Also, you're going to notice that I don't really give scientific names for birds. That's because unlike most animals, the actual common names for birds are standardized. So a tufted titmouse in any place is a tufted titmouse. You're not going to confuse it with other birds. So I don't have to give you the scientific name here. And they're also very difficult to say. So it's really just pointless in this particular instance. All right. So the bird we're going to start with is a very cute little bird. And it's called a tufted titmouse. No, it's not a mouse. It's actually a bird. And this is a larger songbird, still smaller than a cardinal. It's kind of a silvery blue-gray in color on the top. And then it's white below with rust-colored patches on its sides. It also has a tuft or crest on the top of its head. Now, these birds sing very similarly to a cardinal. So if you remember, the cardinal says, purdy, purdy, purdy. Well, the tufted titmouse says, Peter, Peter, Peter. So the way I remember this is that I just think of a tufted titmouse named Peter. You know, it's not very complicated. But I'm going to play it for you right now. You hear it? Okay, cool. So that's the song of the tufted titmouse. They're found in hardwood, pine, forest, forest edges. You can really see them anywhere and they're a very common feeder bird. So they're often found on bird feeders. And there's usually more than one. If you see one tufted titmouse, you're more than likely going to see others. And as far as like mixed species flocks go, which is when you're out bird watching, a lot of times birds stay together, even if they're not the same species of songbird, they're going to kind of be near each other because they can help each other look out for danger. And a lot of times mixed species flocks have similar mixes. So a lot of times you'll see chickadees, tufted tit mice, um, and things like that. Uh, maybe a finch, goldfinch here or there together with each other. So you often see some of the same birds together at the same time. That's our first bird. Now our second bird is the American Robin. Now Everybody has heard of a robin, but a lot of times people mistake cardinals for robins because of the saying red robin. Now, robins aren't actually red all over. They're kind of a brownish color on their heads, back, and tail with a bright orange scarlet colored breast. Now, the robin sound is variable, so it changes over time, but it's very melodic with kind of notes going here and there. And to me, there's no real way to recognize a robin except for you know it's nothing else and it kind of has that lilting, very song-like quality. So this is it right here. You see what I mean? It's nothing specific, it's just kind of a nice little tune that they sing. Now, the places you're gonna see a robin most often is gonna be actually on the ground. So, robins are your quintessential early bird that gets the worm. And if you see a robin, a lot of times they're on the ground digging through the leaf litter, trying to pull earthworms out of the ground. So, more often than not, you're gonna see a robin on the ground rather than in a tree. Okay, so our third bird, my favorite bird, guesses, anyone, anyone, can you remember? Carolina chickadee. So I love chickadees. They're very, um, you really know you're looking at a chickadee. You're not going to be confused. There are several kinds of chickadees that look very similar, but the only ones that would be down here are called Carolina chickadees. There's also the black cap chickadee and some other varieties. But the way you know the chickadee is it has a black head and black neck separated by brilliant white 
cheeks. And then they have kind of a brownish gray back and tail. Now, chickadees actually say their names when they sing. So they go, chickadee. You can hear it right here. Do you hear it? It may not sound exactly that way, and birds are different based on their location, so they change slightly, but I remember it as they say their name. Chickadees are very inquisitive and acrobatic birds, so often when you see them up in the trees, sometimes on the smaller limbs, they're kind of walking around the limbs trying to get to things. They may be hanging upside down on the tree, and they're kind of investigating their surroundings. So they're very cute little birds to watch in action. But chickadees do usually stay in forested areas. So if they are in your yard, it's because you have several large trees. They're not often seen in very open areas. All right, bird number four, the Eastern Towhee. Now this bird is also similar looking, I wouldn't say similar to a robin, but if you're gonna confuse something, it might be a robin and an Eastern Towhee, and that's because of the orange on their sides, almost to their chest area, even though their chest is technically white. Now, this is actually a sparrow, but it's a very large sparrow. So usually sparrows are smaller birds, but Eastern Towhees are very large. And they, the males in particular, have a black head and back, and wings but they have some white striping on their wings and then they have brilliant orange to rust colored kind of markings on their si on the sides of their chest up under their wings females aren't as black they're more brown in color on their head and back but they still have that orange coloring that you really can't mistake and they're the ones you might confuse with a robin if you got a quick look and not a good real hard look at it these birds also forage mostly on the ground, another reason you might confuse them with a robin. However, their call is very different, so this is a really good distinguishing factor. So an eastern towhee, some people say that they say their name. Towhee, towhee. I always learned it as the bird telling you to drink your tea, drink your tea. And that distinguishing factor is that some birds in some areas only have like two main notes to their song while some others closer to here have three notes. But I'll play you the common song here and you can decide which you want to use to remember it by. Alright, yeah, okay. They're usually found in like dense brush and thickets and things like that and that's going to be where they build their nests too. So you're not going to see them somewhere without a lot of understory usually. Okay, bird number five. Blue jay. Now a blue jay is not a bluebird. Very different things. It's a bluebird, don't get me wrong, but it's not the species bluebird. It's a blue jay and they're actually very large birds and they've got that distinguishing blue, white, and black coloration with the crest on the tops of their heads. They also don't have a true call. They mimic somewhat and often their call is imitating a crow kind of warning people off their nest because they're very protective of their nests. Now their favorite food is acorns, so often they're found near oak trees, but they're gonna be more along the forest edge so that they can get out into the open if need be, but they also have some protection on the edges of the forest. Okay, bird number six. Now, recently in my yard, there's been one of these birds and I see it briefly or hear it briefly every once in a while and I haven't got a real good look at it, but I totally know what it is because you really can't mistake it. And I'm hoping if we're out in some good hardwood forest with a lot of like dead trees or snags, we might see one. It's called a pileated woodpecker. Now, if you've ever heard of Woody the woodpecker, he is a pileated woodpecker and his laugh is actually a play on or imitation of the pileated woodpecker's call. So pileated woodpeckers have this, you can't mistake it, call right here. Yeah. You really can't, can't miss that, right? It would stand out to you. They also hit on dead or dying wood and they form these really distinctive rectangular holes in the trees. And that's how they get to some of their favorite things or their favorite food, which is a carpenter ant. Now, these pileated woodpeckers are really important because these holes that they form are actually important houses for other animals that need holes in hollow trees to build their nests or to burrow. Also, this is one of the largest woodpecker species, standing very tall. And honestly, if you angered one of these, I would run. Yeah. Okay. 
Species number seven. This is the last one of the birds that more than likely we're going to see. And this one's actually iffy in and of itself because I'm not sure we we'll see it. And if I do see it, I might not be able to get a good enough look at it to know exactly which bird it is because it's one of these small yellow birds I was telling you about. There are hundreds on hundreds of little yellow birds and they have some distinguishing factors. But if you don't get a good look at them, you're never going to know. But the hooded warbler, which is the bird I'm talking about, has a black hood and chin strap. It almost looks like it's wearing, this is horrible, but it almost looks like it's wearing an executioner's hood, okay? That's how it's remembered. It has something to do with its scientific name, too. But it's a very cute little yellow bird, completely bright yellow except for that black hood. Now they're going to be found in really thick brushy areas. So when we were on our hike and I stopped and I saw those cardinals and that one woodpecker, I saw a little yellow bird. More than likely it was a hooded warbler because of the time of year. But he didn't call and I didn't get to see him again so I couldn't be sure. Now a hooded warbler's call is very distinctive. You're not going to confuse it with other warblers. And most people don't really have a true way to remember it. I've made up a way, so bear with me with it. Feel free to laugh at me about it. Your choice. But I think he says, it's very, very nice to meet you. It's very, very nice to meet you. And you'll listen to it here. It's a very fast call. Now, I remember this in that his hood, or his hat, because he's a hooded warbler, he's taking it off and saying, it's very, very nice to meet you. Now, that's stretching it, I know. But hey, when you had to learn a bunch of them in school, you did whatever necessary to make sure you could remember for your test. Now, the eighth bird I've chosen to tell y'all about is one of my favorite species. It's my favorite duck species, actually. And the area I'm going to actually has some nest boxes set out, and I'm really hoping we might get to see a wood duck if it's, you know, everything goes according to plan. Wood ducks are some of the most gorgeous ducks with the greens and the reds and the blues and each feather having a completely intricate and unique pattern. You really can't miss a male with those red eyes and those beautiful feathers. The female has a white eye ring which is also very distinctive. Interesting thing about wood ducks is that they're cavity nesters. So this means that instead of nesting on the water or nesting right off the banks of a lake or a pond, they actually nest in trees or nest boxes if they're provided. And for this reason, they are actually one of the few duck species with actual claws that allow them to grip and stand on tree limbs. It's really cool. Now, wood ducks have kind of an interesting call. The really only the way to remember it is just by learning it. This is the male call. And we may hear that, and I really hope we get to see some. They're going to usually be in ponds, lakes, streams, anything that's surrounded with a lot of trees, possibly with some cavities, good hardwoods, mature trees that will support a nest. So I hope we get to see all of these birds and more on our hike next week. But that's just a little bit of info on the birds that I love and I see often here in the southeast, so we're probably going to see them. And if you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. And as always, my sources are found in the description box below and check back in on Friday to learn all about signs, scat, rubs, sheds, all sorts of things like that that we might see on our hike. And as always, stay wild and never stop wondering.